a lot of people hate this question. And that's why very few people experience transformation in their lives is because they are not willing to ask themselves this question and really sit with this question and really take self accountability and self responsibility for why things are the way that they are in their life. My question to you is, you have said that when something happens in your life repeatedly, it always has a pattern. So if it's a negative thing, then recognize the pattern and find a solution or heal it because something that's not healed inside you is getting projected outside. Bravo. Yes. But once we recognize the pattern, how do we solve the problem? Okay. First of all, lots of stuff coming your way in the release phase. But second of all, I just want to provide you with something that you can work with right away, right off the bat. So here's the thing is recognition of a pattern is awareness. Awareness of a pattern takes care of most of it. I can't tell you how powerful, especially the more that you do this, how just even recognizing a limiting belief or a pattern or like, hmm, something is happening here. There's something unhealed within me that is recreating this reality over and over and over and over and over again. That awareness alone can fix so many things. It can really wipe out so much of the pattern. So for example, Brendan and I had this pattern around tires constantly deflating, like constantly. And after some time, I'm like, I don't know what this is connected to, but this is a pattern. Okay. This is some sort of a pattern in our life where at some point our car's tire deflates itself, makes us late somewhere, makes us miss something, (laughs) makes us delayed going on a road trip or something like that. And a lot of students since then, and this pops up in my Q and A's on Instagram very often, they'll ask me, Hey, Catherine, have you figured out that tire pattern yet? And I'm here to tell you that that tire pattern is gone. Okay. Hasn't happened since then because It was in that moment, it was in that month when I shared that with my students that I recognized that there was a pattern, that I recognized that there was something in there. And subconsciously, my subconscious went to work on that pattern without even me consciously thinking about it. And afterwards, it hasn't happened since. Knock on wood, because I'm still Russian and I still knock on wood. (laughs) It's part of our culture. (laughs) And um, that alone just shows you how powerful awareness is. Now, Awareness might not solve 100% of every single pattern. So what's next? The next step is to change the behavior that occurs when that pattern happens. Okay, so you recognize the pattern because it just happened. So you are typically reacting to a pattern in a certain way. Okay, that is the first thing that happens, right? You get triggered and there's a reaction. So if you can't control the trigger yet, you can start with the reaction. And so, for example, let's say that every time you sit down to do finances with your husband or with your partner or your wife or whomever, every time you sit down to talk about your bills and finances and goals and budgets and things like that, you get in a big fight. Okay, something gets triggered within both of you that causes a big fight. Okay, well, the reaction to sitting down to work on your finances is the fight itself. It's you snapping at each other or like something is said to one another or like obviously an MBA, we're doing work on ourselves first. So maybe it's looking at like, what am I saying to him or her or them that is triggering this fight between us when it comes to money? Like, obviously I'm believing something about money and obviously like there's a past experience that we've had that is being stacked and layered on top of each other. That's creating this energy right? That isn't serving us, but how am I reacting to it? And how can I change that reaction as the very first step to changing the pattern? Or let's say that every time you manifest a huge sum of money, you also attract a bill, right? To wipe out that money right away. And that's a pattern that's annoying and it needs to go. And obviously there's a belief, there's some sort of unworthiness that you feel around money. You feel discomfort around having money that is causing you to lose it right away. Well, let's say that normally your reaction when you receive this big bill, right? You receive the big bill, you get triggered. What's your reaction? Your reaction is to freak out. 
right? Is to panic, is to cry, is to do all these things, right? And just like throw a tantrum and go in this downward spiral where you're like, oh my God, I have to make more money. I have to make more money. I have to make more money. And you go into this hustle mode and this and that and all these things where eventually you figure out a way to create more money. But then again, something happens, you attract another bill and that money gets wiped out and you're always being brought back down to zero. So how is that reaction changed? So for example, in the example with like your partner sitting down to do finances, what if instead the next time it happens before you go into working on your finances together, you both do an abundance meditation. It's very simple. You know, changing patterns is not about like this whole huge thing that you have to do right away. It's about starting with one simple shift. What is one simple shift I can do this time? Well, maybe we can do an abundance meditation together. Okay. And if they're not willing to do it, at least I can do it because I'm in control of me. Okay. I have all the power over me. And so that's what I'm going to do. And so when we're doing our finances, now I'm in a peak state. Now I'm in this abundant state. So yeah, we might not like what we see. Maybe our finances are still not up to par with our dream, but at least I'm in a state where I'm willing to believe that what we're seeing right now can one day be shifted and changed. And I'm less likely to get mad at my partner for buying an Xbox the other week (laughs) that we're seeing on our credit card bill, right? With the bill, maybe instead of freaking out and crying over the bill, you can thank the bill for the services that you received as a result of that bill. So let's say the electricity bill is like really high this month. Well, maybe we can find gratitude for all of the things that we were able to accomplish as a result of that electricity. Maybe the bill is for a consultant or something that you hired that you didn't realize that their services actually cost more than what you thought that they cost. Well, just be grateful for the services anyway, right? Like, thank God I was able to afford hiring this consultant. Actually, I did get value out of this consultant. And if I apply this value that I received out of this consultant, then you know what? I can actually implement this and I can actually make more money. So that's an awesome thing. Maybe it's a vet bill. Maybe it's a medical bill. Maybe it's a hospital bill, right? It's not always like fun bills that we receive. And so it's just being grateful for, thank God that I was able to get to the hospital in time. Thank God that I was able to live through that experience. Well, thank God that I mended my broken leg or whatever it is that happened, right? Being grateful for whatever that bill is, whatever that service is, is a change in your reaction. And that's step one of changing the frequency of how you interact with this quote unquote negative situation. And by changing your reaction, repetition over time, every time you react differently, you start to believe different things about this scenario. You start to neutralize it so that you're able to look at it objectively and you're able to behave in a completely different way. That's where it happens. You're nipping the limitation right there in the bud. Instead of the pattern repeating itself, you're nipping it in the bud. So you're saying no to limitation. And you're saying that there's another way to go about this. I can see this differently. I can act differently. I can be differently. Who is the version of myself who would handle the situation differently? A lot of people think that when they have a pattern in their life, they expect the pattern to change itself. But when it doesn't, they feel helpless and they feel like, oh my gosh, they're a victim of their circumstances instead of being like, okay, what can I control in this situation? What can I control in this scenario? And then starting there. How do we keep a positive mindset and move past our limiting beliefs when we have literally $20 to your name, a past due credit card, and all of my auto changes getting denied on my credit card? How do I push past this and still believe I have an abundance of money? Also, what else could I say to replace? I can't afford that. So Here's a tough question to always ask yourself. And whenever I have found myself in similar situations in the past, or when I find myself in a frustrating situation or some sort of a plateau, or like something is just feeling like it's not going my way or it's going backwards or, oh my God, things are getting worse, whatever, right? Like we're creating all these stories (laughs) about whatever is happening. Um, I asked myself this really tough question that a lot of people don't like. A lot of people hate this question. 
And that's why very few people experience transformation in their lives is because they are not willing to ask themselves this question and really sit with this question and really take self accountability and self responsibility for why things are the way that they are in their life. So whenever I have a situation like this, or let's take me back to grandma's couch days, the good old days on grandma's couch is what do I have to believe about myself? What do I have to believe about money, about abundance, about the world, about whatever, insert whatever you need, whatever you want in order to be creating such a reality? So what do I have to believe about X in order to be creating such a reality? Or if it helps you, I really love taking the third person perspective. So I really love to pull myself out of myself and pretend like I'm, I'm my friend. Okay. And I'm an, or I'm just a neutral observer of Catherine's and Kina. And I'm just watching Catherine. This is a very powerful exercise. Like I got the biggest aha moment of my fucking life a couple of weeks ago where I'm like, oh, okay. That makes sense. This is where I need to work. My work is cut out for me here. This is, these are my action steps. I can see it clearly. So you could be like, Hmm, wow. If, um, Jessica was my friend, what does Jessica have to believe about herself in order to be creating such a reality? And that's really where you need to dig in and see where you're giving energy to beliefs that aren't serving you. So when we introduce the limiting belief blaster, that's where I want you to focus on. Bring this frustration to the limiting belief blaster. You have a tool, you have a literal formula. When I talk about the funnel in which you enter the limiting belief blaster, where it could be like something that triggers you, a negative emotion, or just an area in life that you have a lot of frustration in, you start there with that funnel. And then whatever comes out of that, that's what you want to work on. You asked about, you know, what else you could say to replace, I can't afford that. Well, some of my favorites is instead, you know, subconscious mind loves to answer questions. So instead of being like, why can't I afford that? Be like, how can I afford that? Where are there money manifesting opportunities that I'm just not seeing right now? Because remember, if you're really hyper-focused on all this happening here, what is your RAS going to filter more of? Your RAS is only going to find more of similar reality. And so if you ask yourself, where are the money manifesting opportunities? Let's focus on that instead that I'm not seeing right now. And your subconscious mind can't help, but want to answer that question. Where else is there abundance in my life that I'm not allowing myself to see right now? You guys, abundance isn't just in money, though I know it's awesome and everyone wants that and you can have that, absolutely. But it's also understanding that abundance is a connection to more than enough in all facets of life. And by shifting your focus to, you know, where else do you have an abundance? Do you have an abundance of love in your life? Do you have an abundance of gratitude? Do you have an abundance of clothing? Do you have an abundance of hair on your head, right? Like, (laughs) do you have an abundance of food in your fridge? That will allow you to build a stronger relationship with abundance that you can trust that look, no matter what happens, there's always more than enough. There's always, the universe will always provide and the universe will always replenish. And another way of saying, um, this is something that really helped me. And someone did bring this up in the Q and a portion, the questions, which is, um, a lot of people would ask me, Catherine, what if like you're saving your money or you're currently on the manifestation journey and you're like paying off your debt and you just don't have money to spend on like going to a weekend trip to Las Vegas with your friends. What is another way of, instead of telling them, oh, I can't afford that. What is an empowering thing that you can tell them? And it's literally like getting creative and just saying, this isn't in alignment with my priorities right now, but I'm so excited to join you guys next time when it is in alignment with my priorities or yeah, this yacht (laughs) isn't in alignment with my priorities right now, but holy am I so excited to one day be able to purchase it or to be able to charter it in the Mediterranean around the islands of Greece with my whole family and all my friends one day soon. Right. So you're shifting the focus of like, 
Maybe not right now. It's not an alignment right now, but one day it will be. That's all that you need. Remember that tiny piece of evidence, that internal lawyer just needs to focus on the fact that it's going to happen no matter what. It doesn't matter that there's all this other evidence of it never happening. You just need that tiny little piece of evidence that will get you out of jail. (laughs) That will get you out of lack and scarcity jail, right? That's all that you need. And you just need to get really good at arguing for that one little piece of evidence. And I obviously like hearing that, um, analogy was so helpful that I love to share it now. Um, and we'll be sharing it from this point forward. But I realized as I was hearing it, the reason why I wanted to share it with you is because it's literally how I've done this. It's how I went from having absolutely nothing, no proof, no one believing in me, just nothing but a freaking dream and a vision. And then literally having my whole dream and my vision starting from the fucking cot behind my grandma's couch, which is just a fun little tidbit of my grandma's couch story is she tried to make me a private space in her living room because I had nowhere else to sleep. And instead of making me feel like I'm couch surfing, she brought a cot from another grandma, Eastern European grandmas. She brought a cot, like literally you guys, like a nap cot or like a, you know, cot that you would sleep on if you're like boot camp training or something like that. And uh, made me like a little bedroom behind her couch between the couch and the wall. And that was so uncomfortable. But I remember like crying myself to sleeping. Like, is this really what my life looks like? Did I really say no to medical school for this? Did I really say goodbye to beach body coaching for this? Like, did I really say goodbye to living this cozy life at my parents' house for this, right? It was wild. And I had to find the one little piece of evidence of like, you know what? Everyone in these books that I'm reading, these manifestation books, they say that if you desire something, it's already done. In the energetic world, it's already done. Just because you envision something, your mind doesn't know the difference between what's real and what is imagined. And so who gives a fuck if it's just imagined? I'm going to argue for that. That's where my internal lawyer is going to come in. I don't care if I'm sleeping on a cot right now behind my grandma's couch (laughs) and then moved on my grandma's couch. That doesn't matter. All I need is this tiny little bit of proof, tiny little bit of faith, tiny little bit of belief. And then I just let that grow because that's the seed that I planted into my subconscious mind. And that's all it fucking took. And every day became easier and easier and easier for that little tiny little seed to sprout into a seedling, to sprout into a plant, to sprout into a tree, to sprout into that exact reality that I was dreaming of on my grandma's couch. And of course I live far beyond that reality now, but that's all it took. Okay. Yes. Give full gratitude for any bill you pay with. Thank you for the electricity this hydro bill gave. Give full gratitude for all money that I spent. Look at what the credit card purchase gave you. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, I've had so much evidence so far already through this time together. A big one being paying off this course and not on my credit card. Oh my gosh, congratulations. Do you have any tips on how to get better in embodying the new thoughts? The first thing that comes to my mind when you ask that is get better at embodying new actions because we can sit in our rooms and work on our thoughts all day long and beliefs and this stuff, but it's in the actions that you take that your brain chemistry actually changes. It's in the acting upon that your subconscious actually shifts. And so instead of being like, I just need to tell myself a thousand times that I'm wealthy, Just start acting like a wealthy person and do it in steps, of course. It's like, would a wealthy person avoid checking their bank account? Probably not. Maybe I can do that. And it's even in spite of having anxiety or fears come up, which of course there's practices like deep belly breathing. There's uh, visualizations you can do. There's all kinds of stuff that you could do, of course, to help with the mental part. But it's ultimately in ripping the bandaid off and just logging into your bank account that you're going to start the process of embodiment. And through taking the actions, the thoughts are going to change. And guess what? They're going to change automatically. 
<laughs> so going back to automatic, this is how we can use automatic in our favor, right? But I feel like there's a fine line there I experience. Like a wealthy person wouldn't think twice about X investments. So do I take the chance even though I'm tight with my finances? So yes, a wealthy person wouldn't think twice about X investment, but take it into proportions, okay? Let's say the wealthiest version of you wouldn't think twice about a million dollar investment. Am I saying just take the fucking million dollar investment? Of course not, because you don't want to put yourself in a lower vibration. Andrea always says, it's the feminine that leads and it's the masculine that supports. And the same thing with intuition. Intuition leads and logic supports, okay? Your intuition is leading you on the path of a wealthier lifestyle of a wealthier life, but you need to support things with logic too. Okay. So if you just do that, that's completely illogical. There's an imbalance of intuition versus logic. There's an imbalance of feminine versus masculine energy, right? So you want to bring it back into balance. So let's go in proportion. What is in proportion to you right now? What is something that based on your finances, a person who has these kind of finances shouldn't think twice about XYZ investment? but still does out of an old pattern. So let's say for you, it's a hundred dollar investment. Let's say it's a hundred dollar course or for you, it's a $2,000 course, whatever. And you still don't take action with that, even though you do have the money, but it's that fear of like, what if the money doesn't last and blah, 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 and all this stuff. It's like in proportion, don't think twice about that investment. And as you do, guess what? The universe rewards. The universe will bring more. And then you're able to grow and grow and grow into a wealthier person to where you are able to make million dollar investments. Like you can just drop a million bucks on a new property that you want to convert into an Airbnb or a retreat, whatever the fuck. Okay. But you're no longer afraid. You don't feel hesitation because you have the money. Why do we, ha- why do you have the money? Because you manifested the money. How did you manifest the money? Because you started manifesting when you had far less. I started manifesting from negative bank account balances. When I started manifestation, babe, I had a negative. I was the queen of negative bank account balances. Okay. How did I get here? Let me tell you, wasn't in investing a hundred grand from a negative bank account balance. It was in me being like, huh, what is in proportion to this? Could I buy, like, for example, at that time, I was very much into fitness still am just differently. It's not part of my business, obviously. I really encouraged myself. I pushed myself outside my comfort zone to shop at Whole Foods for certain ingredients. So for me, that was a big step. For me, that was me being the wealthiest version of myself was buying this particular like healthy ice cream that I wanted that was only available at Whole Foods or Sprouts or one of those stores. Then I would buy like certain uh, produce that were organic was important for me based off of the dirty dozen and the clean 15 list that I would buy those certain produce organic. And then the rest, I could go to like Ralph's or something or Vaughn's or whatever. But it's important that I would take those steps because in taking those steps, I was showing the universe that I there's plenty more where that came from. And I would say that I adopted that from Marie Forleo. There's more where that came from. And another example. Something I did was I didn't have very much money, but my wallet always had like quarters and change and stuff. And so I did my best to give it away. How did I do that? Because I was like, you know, the the wealthy version of myself gives away all kinds of money because she's very interested in all these causes and just helping people and this and that. So I was like, let me just like go and bless people and pay for their parking meters. I would walk by parking meters, especially outside my job at the time or um, outside the grocery store or wherever I would go. And I would just drop change into people's parking meters and just fill them up or just like fill up one, you know, like that has, even if it has plenty of time in it, I was just like, you know what? The next car is going to have free parking today. Let me tell you how much, first of all, first of all, my, this was never my intention, but the law of cause and effect, the law of karma is very real. I can't tell you how many times I have not gotten parking tickets because of that fucking karma. There are so many times where I unintentionally ran out of time on my meter, never fucking got a ticket. Like knock on wood to this day, still haven't gotten a parking ticket since that time. No, maybe that's a lie. Maybe I had like one or two, but proportionally, proportionally speaking, very fucking few. 
I can't tell you how many times I've pulled into a uh, parking spot where the meter was actually already full. Hmm, That's interesting. Another thing I would do is um, back in Gig Harbor, I would go to Target and part of my 10, 10, 10 rule, which you can read all about in my book. um, People ask me, do I still practice it? I still practice the principles. The percentages are different because it just wouldn't make sense financially for me and how I want to create my money right now and how I want it to grow so that I can go even bigger with how I handle my money. The percentages have changed but I still donate. Like I support an organization a couple of weeks ago around, um, a child loss, like families who are grieving child loss and, um, needing support around that found a random GoFundMe on TikTok, drop the grand in that. Like I'm still doing those things. I'm, you know, tithing with my shaman, giving offerings every now and then for the spiritual work that I'm receiving in return and all this stuff. Like there's still elements of that. And so in the 10, 10, 10 rule, I I don't want to say the word force. I encourage myself to go to Target and 10% of my beach body checks, I would, you know, withdraw from the bank in 10 and $20 increments. Or maybe it was like, maybe sometimes it was like a hundred bucks. One, like I'll do a hundred bucks one time, or I would get like five twenties or something like that. And I would go to Target and I'd put a post-it note and I encourage everyone to do this. I saw a couple of people doing this. Like if we can make this a trend, this will be awesome. Like, let's blow this up. Let's make this the next TikTok trend, please. Um, I would put on a sticky note. I would say money is an infinite resource and it is always flowing your way. Please trust that or something like that. Some sort of encouragement around how money is just a frequency you tap into. Money is just energy. The world wants to bless you you are meant to have a great day. You are meant to be wealthy, things like that. I put it on a post-it note, put on this uh, money and I would hide it in random places. So I would hide it in like a book that someone would have to pick up and open it. I've hid it actually in a book on a plane. Like, you know how you can, the, the pocket, like I just left a book and money in the pocket for someone else to find. Like I got off the plane, but left the book with the money. So I've done that. I'll put it underneath a pillow, like in the pillow section or the home decor section, put in a candle. So it's just like random places that people would find it. And let me tell you, as time went on, I was able to give away more and more and more amounts of money and it always flowed back to me. So this is what I mean by proportionally speaking. Of course, I'm in a place now where I can do so much more or have so much more, invest so much more, but I started out from a negative bank balance and you can too, anyone can, okay? Okay. Hopefully that answered your question. So someone asked, how do you behave and feel like someone you want to be if you don't yet know how it looks and feels? So remember the principle that the mind doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's imagined. Knowing that concept, the manifestation process requires you to make a lot of shit up. I had no idea what a million dollars feels like. I had no idea what it would feel like to own my G-Wagon or go to Bora Bora or whatever, but I made it up. How do I think it's going to look and how do I think it's going to feel? The unconscious mind doesn't know the difference anyway. It's not like, "Mm, you're bullshitting me, bitch. Like I know that it's supposed to feel like X, Y, Z. Like your unconscious also doesn't know. Nobody knows. (laughs) And so... As far as you're concerned, just imagine it already done and ask yourself, how would it feel and how would it look? And that's it. That, that's the correct answer. Whatever comes to you is the correct answer. So for emotional authority, you want to have emotional neutrality to make a decision. So you want the entire length of your emotional wave to pass. And once you feel neutral, that's when the right decision comes. It's like the clarity comes through neutrality. So it's not like you don't want to make a decision from your initial reaction because your initial reaction will be totally different from your neutral reaction. So my mom, I taught her this and it's been a game changer. She's an emotional authority and she has been through a lot in terms of like legal stuff in the last um, couple of years and especially with her divorce. And so Anytime she would receive a uh, legal email and she would immediately respond to this email, it's always from this like really heightened emotional state and it never led to a good outcome ever. 
And so I taught her this concept years ago when I first started learning human design. And I said, mom, you need to wait like 48 hours, sleep on it at least at the very least sleep on it, but wait like 48 hours and then respond to the email. And she's like, you know what? I started doing that. I first of all, read it completely differently. Like I reread it two days later and it's a different fucking email and I like understand it better. Second of all, I'm not as reactive. I'm not as emotional. It doesn't affect me as much. And I know exactly what to say. And now this doesn't mean that for every decision you have to apply the emotional authority thing, because obviously you got to eat every day, sometimes multiple times a day. And I don't want you waiting 48 hours to eat your meal and figuring out like, oh, let me go through my emotional way first before I eat. (laughs) This only applies to big decisions. So you can choose what you want to wear. You can choose uh, what you want to eat. You can choose what blanket you want to buy for the house, I guess, like the littler things that don't have as grand of consequences. Um, you don't have to wait for your big emotional wave. Now I've heard, I don't know, but I've heard from many human design teachers and from uh, people with emotional authority that there are mini waves as well. So you can have a mini wave where it's like 15 minutes, you know, whether you want to buy the blanket or not. 15 minutes, you kind of know what you want to eat and exercise walking space, sometimes just having a conversation will help you actually clear the energy around the emotion. So help you process the emotional wave a little bit faster too. 